trailer for Hamnall Village. So we'll move on now to talk specifically about Hamnall moving into Cumhoff the Death Camp. So I just want to give you a few facts. So the minimum minimum number of persons killed in Cumhoff was 152,497. A very exact number, you might think. This comes from the German, uh, uh, West German uh, investigations in the 50s and 60s into Helmdo. They came up with this number based on a report by a, a chap called Richard Kohler, who was a statistician for Himmler. He didn't, he'd included some numbers of um, a number of murdered Jews in a report for Himmler. And this is where this number comes from. Uh, we also have uh, some breakdown. So Helmdo operated in two periods. It operated first from November, December 41 through to April 43. This is called the first period of operation of Kumhof. It reopened for a short time in 1944, from April 44 to January 45. Okay. Most, you can talk in, uh, 95% of the murdered Jews were killed in the first period. So this is from November, December to April 43. In fact, it's even shorter than that. The vast majority were killed between December 41 and August, September 42. There was actually very few killings after uh, September, October 42. What they're doing between September, October 42 and the final closure of the camp in the first period in April 43 is cleaning up what they've done. Disposing of bodies, demolishing the camp, etc., etc. They opened up it again in uh, April 44 because they want to kill the remnants of the Jews in the Litmanstadt ghetto. There were about 60,000 Jews left in the Litmanstadt ghetto. They opened up Kumhof with the idea of killing them all. They decided, nobody knows the, the, re the real reason for this, after killing about 7,000, that they didn't want to do it anymore in Kumhof and they decided to send them to Auschwitz. So then in Kumhof, there was no real killings after uh, May, June 44. They killed a few Jews from the Lippmannstadt ghetto, but after that, again, the, the, the uh, SD and Gestapo and the Schutzpolizei weren't really doing very much. They were just very quiet time, just making sure the camp had been uh, demolished, cleaned up, etc. As I said, the, the, the victims of Kumhof were primarily Jewish. In fact, 95% were Jewish. The gypsy camp in Lippmannstadt ghetto was sent to uh, Kumhof en masse because they had typhus. And in fact, they brought typhus to Kumhof. So we have some evidence. For example, uh, Judge Bednash, when he did his investigation in 1945, found the hospital records from Kolo Hospital. And he found a list of, I think it's 45 members of the Zonderkommando, being SD, Gestapo, Schutzpolizei, who had to have hospital treatment in Kolo Hospital. And actually many of, them, many of them were getting treatment for typhus. Because when the gypsies were brought to uh, Hamno, they brought the typhus with them. And there was at least one of the SS under commander died of typhus in uh, Kolo Hospital. So we're but we're primarily talking about Jewish victims here, some gypsies. There's also some evidence from excavations done in Kolmhof in the 80s and 90s of Polish and Soviet prisoners of war. So for, for example, they found some dog tags, as we say in English, dog tags, uh, from soldiers uh, in, when they excavated in Kolmhof. So there is some evidence of Polish and Soviet prisoners of war. Uh, there's also, very interestingly, uh, strong evidence that some of the children from the Dice in Czechoslovakia when the village was uh, flattened and all the people either killed or sent to camps many of the children were sent to Lippmannstadt some of the children were, were uh, selected for Germanization not many, the rest were sent to Kumhof where they were obviously murdered the, there are no surviving records from the operation of the Kumhof death camp there are none. All the records were destroyed probably in January 45. 
So it makes it uh, a very diff difficult, it's not like Auschwitz where many documents survived or some of the other camps. There are no documents concerning Kumhof from the camp itself. So it makes it almost like uh, a jigsaw puzzle trying to put together the facts and, and the understanding of how and what happened. But it is, people are fairly certain that uh, the children not Germanized from the DG did come to Kumhof and be, be killed. So, what are we talking about in terms of Kumhof death camp? Again, this is not one small uh, camp where people were killed. They basically utilized the whole area. So, there were two parts really to Kumhof death camp. First is the palace camp, Hoflager. The second is the forest camp called the Waldlager. These are about four kilometers apart uh, off the main road between Helmdor and Kohl. So, you see here, here is Helmdor, this is the palace camp or the castle camp. Up here we've got the forest camp or the Waldlager. These are, this is about four kilometers. We've got Kohl up the top there. Other interesting uh, places to note, which we are going to talk about, are Poechi and Zavadka. Zavadka was a mill on the river, and in Poechi was a, a station stop for the narrow gauge railway. So this, Koro, Poechi, Zavadka, the Valdlaga, uh, the palace camp, this is the area utilized for the death camp. So again, we're not talking about a small little space, we're talking about this whole area being utilized. So, if we talk about the palace camp. So the palace camp comprised a manor house, a granary, and some garages, which were, we think were added by the SS Zonder Commando during the operation of the death camp. The manor house had a basement, a ground floor, a first floor, and an attic. It was quite a substantial building. You can see it here. This is a pre-war photograph uh, of the owners of the uh, palaces or, or the manor house that was known then, the von Bistrums. This is a photograph of the back of the <coughs> palace. So as you can see, this is quite a substantial building. This is like the local uh, dignitaries of the, of the area. The palace, in the first period of operation of Kulmhof, is where the victims were brought to undress and be gassed. So this is the place where the actual killing occurs. This is also where the belongings of the Jews, because they brought all the belongings with them, were sorted uh, and distributed. And this is also where the gas vans and trucks of the Zonda Commando, who operated uh, Kumhof, were stored when not in use. So the, the Zonda Commando had, oh, I'm going to talk about gas vans later, but uh, three, uh, well, probably three gas vans. There were also, we think, three trucks during various periods used for transporting Jews. Uh, there was also a Jewish Arbeiter commando selected from Jews brought to Helmer. They were used for many things. They were used for tidying up uh, the camp. There were also uh, some Jews selected who were uh, skilled in shoemaking, tailoring, they were selected and they were used by the uh, Zonda commander to make clothes, fix shoes, etc. and also uh, fix belongings of uh, Jews that had been confiscated. They lived in the basement uh, or the lower floor of the palace. And they were changed periodically. Uh, there was also a Jewish Arbeits commander that worked in the Waldlager, which we'll talk about it later. This is another photograph uh, before the war the bon, uh, from the von mm. Bistrums. Again, this is the rear of the palace. Uh, so this is, this is the most prominent building apart from the church in the whole area. The von Bistrums have gone by the time uh, the Germans arrive. Uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, it's being occupied by a number of Polish families who were obviously uh, removed when the uh, Nazis set up the, the death camp. One of the things we've been doing, and uh, this is a, a huge job, we've been trawling the archives in many different countries for uh, available documentation on Helmdor. 
In Hungary, there was also a Polish Arbeitskommando. This Polish Arbeitskommando was selected from prisoners in Fort Seven. Fort Seven was a Gestapo prison or Gestapo uh, camp, maybe even a KL outside of Posen. They were selected from there and they were used by the Nazis in various killing actions, including the killing of mental patients in the Wartegau in 1939 and 40. This is the very same men also came to Kumhof. They were there as another set of uh, available help to organize uh, and do some of the dirtier jobs the Nazis didn't want to do themselves. The, although, uh, quite interesting, Arthur has actually been working on a book for uh, two years on the Polish Arbeitskommando. They, there were eight of them. They became friends with the uh, Zonder Commando, the SS Zonder Commando that worked in Kumhof. They drank beers with them, they could walk around the village, they didn't wear prisoner uniforms, they could bring girlfriends to help them. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's not just Germans feeling uncomfortable with the, with the role of, of what happened, it's also some uncomfortable questions for, for Poles. We had a theory that one of the reasons there was no Helmno, real Helmno trial in Poland after the war is because they found out there was a Polish Arbeitskommando working in Helmno who were effectively involved with the killing process. And they weren't treated as prisoners, they were treated as almost as help, Hilfspolizei, in a way. Uh, now this drawing here, the Poles after the war did numerous investigations into the Polish Arbeitskommando. This is a, a, a map drawn by one of the members of the Polish Arbeits Commando, Henrik uh, Mania, who was actually interrogated many times, last time being in the 90s, if I remember correctly. Uh, he gave massive testimony on not just Kumhof, but the killing of mental patients. Uh, he was a young guy when he went to uh, Kumhof. I think he was in his teens, 17, 18, a young boy. Well, anyway, this is a map from him that we found in the prosecutor's office in, uh, in uh, Posen. Uh, this shows, it's a pretty basic map, but this shows the church on the left. This is the palace gap here. So this is the manor house. There's also an orchard in the manor house with trees. <coughs> this is the main road from uh, Dombier uh, to Como. On uh, here is where the canteen is. <coughs> here they built some barracks because uh, at some point they had uh, 150 shoots bullets uh, in Kumhof. So they needed to put them somewhere, there were just not enough houses, so they built some barracks right across the road. And this is the entrance to the, the death camp here, the palace area. The school is here. So this is 100 meters here. There is a German school teacher teaching Volksdeutsch in the school. There is a very interesting story. The rectory, which is down here, the uh, SD and Gestapo members of this under commander used to have parties. And they used to bring German nurses from the hospital and call. And uh, what they used to do in the morning, they just used to throw out the nurses out, out the front door, still in a drunken state. And we have testimony from the school teacher, from Mr. Nicholson, complaining about the parties the, uh, the SD and Gestapo are having in the house and how it's a disturbance on the school to walk into school. Now, how perverse is that? You've got a death camp operating here where <laughs> 150,000 people are killed and yeah, the school teacher's complaining about uh, the nurses you know, lying naked in the, uh, the grounds of the rectory in the morning and it disturbs the school to. Very uh, strange. <coughs> 